Prince Harry dropped the clangor at the end of his guest editorship of Radio 4's Today program this week. When asked by the BBC how Meghan Markle had coped with her first Christmas as Sandringham, Harry reported that it had been fantastic. His fiancée, he said, had really enjoyed it. Yes, they had an amazing time. Yes, there was a complicated knot of Windsorian traditions to be explained to an incomer, but it had all been fun. And then came the howler. She's done an absolutely amazing job. She's getting in there, he enthused it's the family, I suppose, that she never had. Oh no. Sound the in-law warning clacks and run the Jolly Roger up the flagpole of family friction. Set the dials for stormy waters the family she never had? The family she never had? What is she, an orphan? Harry's words hung in the air like an icy reprimand. An unintended slight to the actual Marco parents, who divorced in 1987 when Meghan was six years old. First to register annoyance was Meghan's half-sister Samantha Grant, who was not best pleased. Actually Meghan has a large family who are always there with her and for her, she said. Complete with sister, brother, aunts, uncles, cousins and the glue of our family, our amazing, completely self-sacrificing father. Yikes! Harry may have the benefit of the best education money can buy, the character building attributes only 10 years in the army can bring and the sensitivities of a man in touch with his inner ginger, but he has a lot to learn about the politics of in-law dom. And rule number one for any new husband is never, ever to publicly state that your family is somehow better, happier and more loving than her family, even if you believe it to be true. Especially at this time of year. When kinship loyalties and festive one-upmanship can create tension, hurt and misery. And particularly for those couples who are forced to choose with which set of in-laws they will spend their Christmas, often leaving the other set feeling bereft and unloved. Imagine that feeling magnified a hundredfold when the opposing side is the House of Windsor, replete with palaces, a Boxing Day pheasant shoot and royal prestige. Who could compete with that? The prince's remarks were not only clumsy, they opened up a whole silo into the nature of his relationship and whirlwind courtship with this extraordinary young woman. For him to say this, Meghan, at some deep level, must have presented herself as a victim, or a casualty of family circumstances at the very least. Meanwhile, he clearly sees her as someone he has to rescue. A damsel in distress a broken sparrow, a lost Cinderella he can wrap his arms around and ensconce behind the castle ramparts. One can see how seductive this fairy tale fantasy must have been for them both, adding another thrilling, sexy layer to their clandestine wooing. The romance of it all is utterly killing. Yet however much Harry loves his pa and his grandma, the notion of the Windsors providing a calm, Benevolent haven for anyone, let alone a Hollywood actress with a mind of her own, is laughable. They have their strong points, but even key members of the firm would surely agree that they are one of the most dysfunctional family units on the planet, right up there with the Borges and the Craze. Not only must new wives negotiate the protocols of a complex hierarchy, they are requested to curtsy every time Granny trundles into view. One big happy family? Three of the Queen's four children have divorced. One ex-wife, Duchess of Ferg, is still banished to Nutter Cottage on the Sandringham estate every Christmas. Most of the kids seem incapable of holding down any job except chief paperclip sorter in an art gallery. Some members seem to love horses more than humans. Uncle Andy is a major worry. And, for God's sake, no one mentioned the Diana word. Meanwhile, the Duchess of Huff is not talking to the Duke of Puff, her family is bah, 